In news this week, the White House COVID-19 task force disbanded. The search for the next pandemic czar has not been successful. Eric, what could this mean for the future and viability of Project Next Gen? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I think it's, first of all, very worrisome that we are now, you know, leaderless and rudderless in terms of having a pandemic czar in the White House, um, which, by the way, is mandated by federal law, but seems nobody wants to take that job. I don't blame them, but it is still very frustrating because obviously we all know that although the official emergency is over, I think COVID still remains a threat as well as many other looming potential viruses that could be pandemics. But the other worrisome issue is Project Next Gen, which White House just last month announced is the $5 billion initiative for next generation COVID vaccines. The problem is that uh, Project Next Gen funding is does not come from a specific line item, but rather cobbled together from uh, various uh, pandemic-related emergency funds. And the worry is that now, first of all, with the debt ceiling crisis looming, uh, there is a chance that th- these extra funds that is being cobbled together for Project Next Gen could be part of the clawback of the deal to avoid uh, you know, the debt ceiling uh, default. Uh, and Biden has already indicated he'd be willing to give that up as a concession. So we're nobody's really sure will Project Next Gen be affected because Project Next Gen does come from these extra pandemic funds. If it gets canceled, there goes our hope for a warp speed two. The other issue is that the warp speed two Project Next Gen, aka Project Next Gen, um, they've announced it, but they've put a very high bar. BARDA, which is the U.S., it's the HHS agency um, tasked with dispersing these funds for accelerating. BARDA was part of what uh, helped disperse the money for Operation Warp Speed um, originally that got us the COVID vaccines. BARDA has set a rule that projects must be phase two trial ready by next month or else you're not eligible for funding. And the problem with that is, well, this is a chicken and the egg. If you're already rich enough of a pharma company that can do that, yes, you get in the money. But if you're not, you're automatically excluded. There's this very high threshold of entry. Uh, it's almost as if there's a velvet rope effect where uh, you have to be a mega big pharma in order to uh, participate and get these pandemic next generation vaccine funding. And by definition, if it requires phase two already, then all the next generation studies on phase that are currently in phase one, the need human phase one trial funding are automatically excluded by this bar to call. Um, and so this is very frustrating. It's, it's less looking less going to be a project next gen as project next int as in a iteration. Um, and I think that's the worry. Now, NIH will fund maybe possibly some of the phase ones, but it's not in any way like truly like a warp speed two. Um, it's, it's, it's for the projects that are ready to go and enter human trials um, that companies were able to bootstrap to phase two, which is already very difficult. And um, it's, it's velveting rope everyone else out. And finally, of course, I pray to God that this pot of money, this $5 billion that they cobbled together for Project Next Gen is not in any part canceled by the debt ceiling deal because it's already looking bad. Um, Biden has already says we don't, you know, he's willing to give it up as part of the concession. And uh, nobody has really talked about, well, what does that mean for Project Next Gen? So altogether, there's a lot of things that kind of worries me. No pandemic office czar. Nobody wants to take it. The office, by the way, it's a new office, but there's zero funding allocated for it, um, which is ironic because the law requires the office to be appointed and filled, but there's no funding for it. So we don't have really good leadership. And uh, the, any extra buffer we have for pandemic funding may be cut off. So 
Um, so this is a very nervous wait and see kind of moment. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for coming on and giving us that update. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Please check out our website, whn.global, for more information and resources and to join our group. Have a great day.